Okay, you're taking your test on linear equations, and your teacher asks you to come up with the slope-intercept form equation, but you're given the point and the slope. So normally when you see a point and a slope, you're going to write it in point-slope form. That's exactly how we're going to start this problem. But what your teacher is asking you to do on this test is are you able to come up with the intercept, the part that's not given with the two pieces of information that he provides or she so here we go. We're going to say y minus y1. You should already know how to write out your equation in what's called point-slope form if you're taking this test. Okay, so here it is right there. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We're going to erase the y1, and we're going to put our y value of 4. We're going to erase the m, and we're going to put in our slope, negative 1 third. And we're going to erase the x1. And because it's a negative value, I'm going to put parentheses there and say negative 6. Because now I'm dealing with a double negative. That's going to turn into an addition symbol. Okay. Remember, slope-intercept form is the type of equation he, wants, he or she wants written out on the test. So let's write down what that looks like. y equals mx plus b where m is our slope, b is our y-intercept. That is not what we're looking at right here. We're looking at an equation in point-slope form, but it can easily be converted into slope-intercept form with just a few simple steps. First off, let's change double negatives into a plus sign. So let's say x plus 6. Okay, we're just cleaning some things up right now. Now, my goal is to get y equals mx plus b, meaning I need to get y all by itself. I'm going to draw a line right down the middle, and I'm going, to, I'm going to write down what my goal is. Y is the only thing I want on the left side. Right now, I have a negative 4. I can't have that. I'm going to need to move that over, but I'm not quite ready to do that because the right side of my equation is not simplified. What I need to do is use the distributive property. That's right. We're going back to all those properties you've learned in the past. Everything's a stepping stone in math. Negative 1 third times x. That's simple. It's negative 1 third x. Negative 1 third times positive 6. Negative times a positive is a negative. 1 third times 6 is going to be 6 thirds. Ew, that's an ugly way to look at that number. 6 thirds is really just a 2. So we're going to write it down as a 2. All right, bring down everything on the left side. y minus 4 equals I am so close, so close to the end. We're right there. What do we got to do? We got to move that negative 4 to the other side. Inverse operations, good thing that we learned that in previous chapters. That will cancel out that term. We're going to add it to the negative 2. We're going to now have y equals negative 1 third x. Negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. Circle it because you've done a lot of hard work and you're at the end. Well done y equals negative one-third x plus two. So what do we know about this line? We know that it's going to cross at positive two on the y-axis. We know that it's negative, so it's going to be going down and over, down one over three between every point. So we have a lot of information that we just gathered from this. Hopefully it all makes sense to you. Study hard and good luck on your upcoming test.